almost like an anthem for school teachers all over North Devon. Michael Gray and the weekend. This is The Voice, loving North Devon. And it is the end of the first week when schools were open to all pupils for the first time since before Christmas. But what's it been like? Well, Fremington Primary School teacher Billy Buckingham joins us now. Hi, Billy. Hello, Laura. Nice to see you again. (laughs) Nice to speak to you. Now, we've stolen you from school for a moment for a quick chat. Are you hiding somewhere? I'm currently sat in my car, which is probably the quietest spot in school at the moment. It's currently lunchtime. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Yes, I can imagine the noise then. Well, we spoke a few weeks ago about your Facebook page, Storytime with Billy. Now you're back in the classroom with all of the children. What's it been like? It's been... Absolutely crazy, <laughs> if truth be told, but in the best way possible. It's just been so nice to have a buzz around school, to see children reunited with their friends, with their teachers. You can just feel those good vibes radiating everywhere, and I think that's given everyone a boost this week. I think we're all tired. The mm-hmm. children are crawling to the end of the week, and I think the staff are as well. But I think it's what everybody needs for everyone's mental health, for our social lives it's, it's just been fantastic really mm. i've really enjoyed it well we know that you teach year one and my two boys mm. are in year five and year two and they did have some concerns before they went back on monday and it was tiny little things like i wonder who i'll be sitting next to in class now will i have been moved away from where sure. i was sat before and it's funny what what kids worry about isn't it what sort of things did you you encounter with with concerns from the children i think there was generally a wave of anxiety about wondering whether things like you said whether things will still be the same whether everything will be different but we found generally things have remained the way they were when they left in December and I think that's really important to them as well they're not coming back into some alien environment Mm. and I think we've learned a lot from the first lockdown when things I think we're probably a lot tighter and a lot stricter but things are now starting to relent a bit more and actually it's important that the children are able to be together and still abiding by general social distancing rules because we, we do need to keep the children safe but we don't want to stop them from actually interacting because I think that's just as important for them. Yeah, and oh my goodness, I'm just thinking when they went back after the first lockdown, everything was different, wasn't it? Because they were told to wash Crazy. their hands every two minutes and sit here and don't look mm. at that person. Whereas now, I suppose, they're more. it's more normal for them, isn't it? It's what they know now. Yeah. And I think if we can all wash our hands a bit more, that's not going to harm us in the future. <laughs> anyway, Wise words, Mr very... Buckingham, wise words. Yes, indeed. <laughs> and that's still very much a thing. They still line up when they come back inside and when they go to lunch and when they've had their snacks to wash their hands. And I think that's probably just good practice for the future. And to them, it's just part of their normal routine now. So if we can keep that going, like I said, it's not going to be a bad thing moving forward. Mm. What sort of thing have you been focusing on this week? Has it been right day one, sit in your seat, back to where we left off in December, or has the focus shifted a bit? <laughs> well, well, I think it's different everywhere you go. I know certainly at our school that we've had a big focus on making sure the children feel settled and that they're happy and they're comfortable, because if they've been away for, let's face it, almost three months, mm. it's going to feel very strange walking back in for them. So definitely that first day was a little bit more lax in terms of teaching as such and just letting them play and be together and that kind of, that's kind of what we do in year one anyway that they have a mix of their carpet-based learning and continuous provision where they're choosing their own learning so that suited us down to the ground because we could just let them interact mm. but i think a lot of children actually benefit from having that routine and just going back to the way things were before rather than trying to sugarcoat things too much and wrap them too much in cotton wool i think some children will thrive off just going straight back into learning because not all of them will have had the same experience at home and not all of them will have been throughout lockdown so I think every teacher works depending on the needs of their class because not one size fits all. And if you do try to do everything the same, then it often doesn't work anyway. So you just need to fit the needs of your class. And mine seems to be back to the way they were <laughs> before, so which which is fantastic. And that's the way I, I like to keep it, that they're settled and ready to learn now. It's a lot to take on for the children, but it's an awful <laughs> lot for the grown-ups to have to, to deal with as well. How are the teachers coping at Fremington? Well, I think that's a great point that you make as well, that we often put so much focus on the mental health of the children and making sure they're okay. But teachers have certainly been through the ringer over this last year or so in terms of what we've been expected to provide. But from the general consensus that I get from working here, most of our teachers, I think, are happy. And, like, it's it's a difficult one because it's really, if you're struggling, that's the hardest thing to say. But everyone here is always so friendly. Everyone, even just a passing comment, hi, you okay? Mm -hmm. And for some people, that can just be enough to start a conversation. I just, I've certainly had my anxieties just because it's going back to everything being so manic again. 
But it's just getting over that first hurdle and getting through the door, like with the children. And we're all in the same boat, so we can all relate to them. Uh, we all look after each other here, and that's why I like about working here so much, is that we do feel like a family, we do feel like a team, and that we know we can talk to somebody if we're struggling. And in our year one team here is absolutely amazing. I mean, we, we get on well, we're able to talk to each other, we can share our worries, and it just makes every day a lot easier and it makes the children happier as well because they can see that we all get on mm. and we know that you've all been working throughout lockdown anyway of course mm. still teaching the children that have been attending school yeah. what was it like on sunday night for you because you know when you go to school and you've got that sunday night sort of tummy feeling where oh, it, yeah. you're a bit nervy were you were you like that i'm sure the children were but were you like that on sunday night I felt like the worry saurus. If I, was like, I, I had those, I had those butterflies, and I think I, I tried to get an early night, but then you often spend your time overthinking and wondering what if this goes wrong and what if the children don't like me. Because for my class, I started this position in January, so it's the first time I would have met them properly. Okay. So I had all of these worries going in my head. But then I, you have to think back. Well, actually, these are all scenarios that are very unlikely. I'm overthinking. I just need to go and do it. But. Ultimately, it was a mix of nerves and excitement as well, because this is where I belong, in front of a class, working with children. And as soon as they all came in, it all just, it was like a duck taking to water again. It was all fine. So I'm glad it's the weekend and I'm glad we got over that Sunday night worry. Yeah. But now hopefully it feels like we can just move back to some normality and do do what we do best, which is support the children and help them to achieve. And of course, they've only got a, a few weeks and then you've got the Easter yeah. break. So you probably uh, will all need that. Yeah. To be <laughs> Roll on the chocolate. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> At least you didn't have to worry about your shoes not fitting because I'm assuming well, that your feet are an OK size and they've been that size for a while. I've been a healthy size 12 feet for about 10 years wow. now. <laughs> yeah, I know. So it's very difficult to find shoes anyway. But yeah, I think that was the concern of a lot of parents too, thinking, oh, well, my children have grown and yeah. shoes don't fit. But I think most schools have been very lean in saying that we understand that it's not easy to go out and buy a uniform now. So if they do want to come in and train us, that's fine. I mean, of course, all schools are different, so mm. I can't speak for everybody. But I know we've been quite lenient here, and now that things are starting to open up, they can start moving and getting more things for their children. But as we know, children grow at a very rapid pace. So, <laughs> if, you're, so if you've got siblings, you're quite lucky you can pass things on. But yeah, they, they I think they've all shot up from the last time I saw them. That was before Christmas. So goodness knows what they'll be like at the end of July. So. Yeah, so I mean, it's Friday afternoon. We know we've got to let you go back to class now. What are you going to be doing with the children this afternoon? Well, you've got some science to do, which is going to be quite exciting. Ooh. And then I know the children are looking forward to that. But I think they're all looking forward to going home. In, to be honest, I think we're all lagging a little bit. We're all exhausted. We're all very hyper. But we're all happy. And that's the main thing. So. Oh, brilliant. Well, thank you for speaking to us this afternoon, Billy. You're welcome. Back to class then, Mr Buckingham. Yeah, I'll have some lunch as well. I'm so hungry. <laughs> Keep in touch with you. Let us know how the kids are getting on. Absolutely, it would be a pleasure. Thank you Thank for calling you. again. Thank you. Billy Buckingham from Fremington Primary. There are the insights of a teacher for us this time round. If you've got children at school and you've been worrying about them this week, wondering if they're getting on okay.